One morning, good afternoon, good evening, good day, depending on where you're watching me from, from and what time you're watching it. My name again is Pastor Lara. I welcome you to the presence of God. And I welcome you to Blissful Home for this week. Glory be to God, we are alive, we are breathing, our homes are intact, and all that concerns us, the Lord is making perfect. We thank God for that. Glory, honor, power, majesty be to his holy name alone. In Jesus' name, amen. Today, we'll be talking about how to manage anger. Anger and management. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Shall we pray? Eternal Rock of Ages, we thank you for another time in your presence. We do not take it for granted. We say be glorified in Jesus' name. Give us divine understanding of your word, O Lord. And teach us. Make us doers of your words. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are going to look at the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter... 4 verse 26 Ephesians 4 verse 26 The Bible says Be angry and sin not Be angry and sin not Let not the sun go down upon your wrath And 27 says Neither give place to the devil Another Bible version says, don't get angry so that you so that you sin. Don't go to bed angry and don't give the devil a chance. We will see from the Bible passage we read that the Bible did not say you can't get angry at all. But it says be angry and sin not. You can be angry, but don't let it deteriorate to sin. So, he says, do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. That means you, 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 it is not a sin for you to sin. That means to be angry. It is not a sin for you to be angry. But when you are angry... What are you supposed to do to control anger so that it doesn't lead to more problems? That is what we are going to look at. When you see injustice, when you see sin, when you see somebody harming the other person, you can be angry. Because when Jesus himself saw people selling and buying in the temple he was angry at them he cleaned the place up so also when you find yourself in situation that you see somebody who is uh being in uh, 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 uh dealing with other people in a terrible manner or you see sin being displayed yes you can be angry when somebody says something contrary to you you can be angry so but when you are dealing with this kind of situations what do you say how do you say it that is what determines whether that anger has led to sin or not praise the lord yes Anger can lead to sin if you react wrongly, if you say wrong thing, if you keep quiet when you are supposed to talk, and so on and so forth. You know, we are talking about blissful home. We will get to that situation in marriage also. When you are hungry, like we said, resolve it. Try that's the first thing 
you should that should come to your mind. Like I said, being angry is not a sin. But it becomes a sin when you hold on to it. You remember Ephesians chapter 4, 26 that we read said, Do not let the sun go down with your anger. So that means you have to resolve anger, whatever it is that causes anger quickly. Don't be angry and then be quiet and then hold it too hard and then they will be asking you, what is wrong? You say nothing. When you hold anger too hard, it leads to bitterness. It leads to hatred. It leads to resentment. These emotions can damage relationships and open doors for simple behavior. Because when you quiet and you start misbehaving, even the other party that is asking you what is wrong, what is wrong, at one time we begin to be angry. Bitterness, uh, strive, and stuff we set in. So you have to find a way to resolve problem that led to anger. Because when you get angry, what it's telling you, what makes you get angry is that injustice or sin or wrongdoing is happening for you to move on you have to be able to tell the person doing the wrong thing this is what you are doing wrong and then find a way to resolve it hallelujah next thing to do is for you to find solution this person has made you angry. You discuss it. You have to forgive. You have to forgive. Reconciliation and forgiveness. This helps the, the, the relationship to be back to normal. Especially when it is done on timely manner. Although sometimes you can be angry because you think your 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 um your pride is being stepped on you, you understand what that means the way you talk to me so if you talk you get angry you discuss it you find reconciliation you forgive the person humility at the end of the day you will realize because the person will tell you that i don't mean that I, that is not what i was trying to say that is not what I was trying to say. I wasn't being disrespectful to you. With that in your mind, it will come down that your pride, that ego that is taking you up there. So addressing the issue at hand before it becomes a stumbling block fosters peace in our relationships. In marriages, somebody did something. Instead of sitting down, to so sit down and talk at, uh, with, the, with, with the intention of reconciliating, uh, uh, of um, not um, trying to win the battle, you want to reconcile. There is, there is no competition in whatever relationship you have, whether parents and children, whether husband and wife, whether even just friends or boss. And um, the one working for the boss, as long as you know you are not competing for anything, the reason when you are angry, you tell the person is that you want reconciliation, is that you want to free your mind so that it doesn't become a um, bitterness or things that will be bigger, that will be difficult. To deal with because simple stepping on somebody's toes can become something people will say i will kill you i will kill you over when one would just say you stepped on my toe i'm sorry but we, and uh, i'm so sorry that won't happen again or whatever it is marriages in marriages the, the reason i say in marriages i say that twice is that you husband and wife have nowhere to run away from each other when you if you work together you will say i will not work in that office again if it is um two friends they'll say i'm not being social person's friend again but you can say 
because um, uh, uh, my food was too salty and I was angry because of it, then I will not marry you again. But that little problem can lead to more and more and more and more anger over anger. I will do my own, you will do your own. And at the end of the day, you will just discover that it will lead to uh, divorce. So it is very key that we know that we are not in any competition. We want to, I'm angry. I discuss it. We try to reconcile. And the way to it is communication. When anger arises, be quick to communicate and seek understanding. When, and also, when the person angry comes to you and say, you offended me. If the person that is being uh, approached, don't try to say, I did not offend you now. Oh, I didn't know that will make you angry. I'm sorry. But I didn't mean to. It's not like, ah, is that why you are now shouting? Ooh, eh, eh. Learn to understand the person. In, in, individuals have a way they perceive situations. And it might be the way you say what you just said. For instance, you come into the house, your wife parked the car, you don't like the way she parked or your husband parked the car, you don't like the way he parked. He parks the car. Don't come in when you come in and say, who parked that car like an idiot? And the woman say, why are you talking to me like that? I'm not talking to you. And wh what do you mean I'm talking to you like that? Did I say it's you? If the person says he or she is offended, he or she is offended, it does not kill anybody to say, I didn't mean to offend you. I am sorry. So let both parties take their own um, fault, re seek reconciliation, communicate. The reason I said this is that that is not what I meant. Because communication, when it is missing, anger grows more. It turns into other things that you'll be like, oh, that what caused that problem? You spill small water on the floor. And when the offense is really big, seek God's guidance. Both of you go to God. Pray. Oh, lest I forget that all this we are saying is easy when you are born again. If you've not given your life to Jesus and you are watching this video, it is time for you to. Because three, um, when you two of you cannot run the home together, especially I'm talking about husband and wife, you need a higher power, that is Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, to help you to know when to talk, how to say it, and how to reconcile. You need to put it in God's hands. And like I said, be willing to forgive. They make you angry. Or the person that is angry says something. Both of you should have a forgiving spirit. Let it go. Let it go. Don't refer to what she did five years ago. Or 20 years ago, I remember. In conclusion of the whole story, this verse we're, we're talking about, be angry but sin not, is very powerful because um, in marriage especially. When you two people live together, together, conflicts are inevitable. But when there is unresolved anger, it will destroy intimacy. When one party is angry and they are saying, what is wrong with you? You say nothing. In the night when they, either party wants to touch you, you are pushing them away. Before you know it, the other person will say, hey, what is it? And turn away. When there is unresolved anger, anger not managed properly, like I have said earlier, it can lead to 
uh, divorce. It can lead to a home breaking and so many other things. One will go to bed, the other one is still upset. But couples will build stronger with more understanding and compassion when they learn to communicate. I am hungry. I'm sorry, I'm angry. You did this. I am I don't like it. And the other party doesn't say I am the husband. I can do what I like with you. Mm -mm. And you can't tell me what my feelings are. It, I am the one that knows if I'm angry. Don't tell me why should you be angry. I had that little thing. What if it makes me angry? You don't mean to make me angry. I am sorry. I didn't make, make, mean to make that happen. But there should be communication. Willingness to forgive. Willingness to let go. Willingness to forget. And willingness to move on after discussion. And the other end, there should be willingness to say sorry. Let that pride go. Marriage is where you never, never, never graduate. You get the certificate the first day. And you never graduate until death do you pass. If we both walk on it marriage is sweet but if one person does not know how to manage his anger or the two parties cannot manage their anger it leads to to more problem um before i go i just want to tell us a story i heard i saw it's not a story it's something that happened here in america a man called the police to tell to tell them that he killed his wife, which he did, because the wife was angry, pushed him. He was angry, took hammer, and killed his wife. I am sure both of them didn't plan to kill each other that day, but something happened. Anger was not managed. One party was angry, the other party got angry because one party was angry and they didn't handle it well. That is why when you look where where where, where you look at um situations, anger makes somebody mad. That's why in America they call when I'm angry, you say I'm mad. Makes you mad, make you crazy. You do crazy things, things you wouldn't have done when you are thinking right. So learn, first of all, to be able to be calming down when anger comes. You need the help of the Holy Spirit. Especially, you are born again, you know how to speak in tongues. <laughs> when anger is coming, start speaking in tongues. So that the Holy Spirit can calm you down. And then you'll be able to tell the person when you are calm, why you are angry. I pray that the Holy Spirit will help us. Our homes will be heaven on earth indeed in Jesus' name. We will not be enduring marriages. We will enjoy our marriages. Pride, anger, unforgiveness, bitterness. We not have space in our home as the Lord Jesus is the head of our homes. So shall it be in Jesus' name. On my YouTube channel, Pastor Lara will be with me. There are many other words of God, words of encouragement there for you to, to read. More, many more blissful home and many more to come. Share this video, comment, um, click on the notification bell so that every time these words come, you will be notified. I love you. And I pray that the Almighty God will keep all our homes in Jesus' name. Amen. See you again next week. Almighty Bye. God, that is who my father is.